Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Hope you like my new little intro there. Had a little play around with some new software yesterday. Got very, very annoyed and nearly threw the towel in. But we got there in the end. My little Blenny there is looking straight at the camera. Now, if you notice, it's very, very quiet in the tank this morning. And the reason being is, on the last video, if you watched it, if not, pop back and have a look. Um, the gobies were actually displaying quite a lot and this morning I've come down and they have both disappeared now she's been out briefly and just to see me because they listen to me coming in and they come out to see me and I think they've spawned somewhere down the back because she's gone back in again now I'm unsure about how gobies breed in the wild obviously they lay eggs they come together probably release the eggs and the sperm together which fertilizes the eggs and then whether or not the male will just look after them or they both look after them is new to me so we've got to wait and find out what's going on but like I say it's very quiet normally she's up and down the glass looking for me little Aunt Blenny there is uh, very very intent on watching me as usual always out and about even the shrimps are up in the back glass now I've got something else to show you at the back there now some of the sea lettuce is actually taken on the back glass now right up in that corner there so I'll take you over that way now if you can see on the glass the shrimps I've left that for a reason there because the shrimps feed on algae just as the um, as the hermit crabs do but I've left that but if you can see on there there's lots of little baby sea lettuce growing now that's going to start covering the back of that tank so it's seeding beautifully in here in the water obviously when you put water in you bring the rocks in and everything else you get these fantastic little creatures and different weeds and different things come in on the rocks and um, and they'll start to attach to things and start to breed now I did go out yesterday for a forage but it was super windy on the beach audio would have been an absolute nightmare but we did come back with something and um, we came back with a half a dozen new shrimps you can see one up there one of the new little little common shrimps there little prawns and um, I know I keep saying that shrimps and prawns now you get the brown shrimps which live in the sand in the UK okay they're the little ones that burrow into the sand and feed in the sand and you get these ones which are the prawns um, which is we've, what we've got in here now as the weather warms up a bit I'll get a push net down the beach and we'll get some out and they can bury in the sand as well but what I did bring back for a laugh and I thought would be an interesting little addition is Lenny there he is Lenny the volcano limpet look at that he's huge so I thought I'd bring him back I'll take you around the other side and we can uh, we can have a look now I brought him home on his rock he was on his rock you can see where he comes out and he cleans it and he is actually moving very very slowly as we speak sometimes you'll see the little tiny antenna poke out from underneath the shell but they are the slightest vibration in the workshop here and he sucks down tight onto that rock Now there's the male now he's come out still very very black now you see that fin on the top now is near enough white oh no it's not it's yellow it just looked like a little bit, a little bit lighter in there but he's come out so I'm not sure where she is but when she came out earlier on she was absolutely stripped thin she really was and ravenously hungry looking Obviously, she's put all her effort and all those, all those calories into breeding, uh, sorry, into producing those little eggs, which I understand they can have quite a lot of. Now, if you look down the back there, they've taken that out as well. There's loads of sand been moved out at the back over there, which is where he came from. Here comes Mrs. Photobomb. Hello, my darling. Look at that. So, yes, we've got Lenny now. Lenny the limpet. We got Aunt Blenny. 
Oh, he didn't like you. Maybe that's it. You see, he's scaring old, scaring that Aunt Blenny away because of maybe there's a big old chunk of eggs. Now I've found eggs in the past down the beach. Normally big orange clumps of eggs, and they're um, but I'm not sure of the uh, the gestation period on these. To be honest, it could be 24 hours. It could be a week. One thing I will say, when I came in here yesterday, and I was going to film it, one micro fry, one tiny little fry, was swimming around in the tank. Now, I'm not sure if that came in on the seaweeds or on the rocks, and as this warmer, now it's warming up in here slightly, I'm raising the temperature, it activated it to hatch. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure where it went. It could have got sucked into a filter, or the gobies, or the shrimps may have. It didn't look too, too healthy. But we had a little tiny fish just appear in here which was very very interesting now on this side of the tank as well you can see that's gone beautiful green all those seaweeds and different little macroalgaes are starting to attach onto the tank as well now we've got some winkles and different grazing shells in here which have a go at it so there's plenty of food for them oh look at that now everyone was after that Cornish sucker and there he is he just popped up you might have saw him before me, but he just moved. And he's in my little magnifier, which is brilliant. Look at that. I can move that out of the way. And there he is. Now, like I said, he mostly comes out at night. You can see that little sucker working away there, underneath. That's weird. But there you go. You don't, under you don't normally see the underside of a clingfish when it's actually moving. You normally see them in people's hands when they're rock pulling little mouth open there, it's a shame I can't get you the other view from the other side to be honest but um, let me put that back where's he gone oh, oh there he is look now he's super healthy, he's been feeding on shrimps in the evening little bits of shrimp I've been putting in there everyone was asking about him, so there you go, he's still safe and well just to let you know everything's thriving in this tank it's absolutely fantastic like I say we've got our beautiful carpet green on the walls now the only two obviously the, the only two ones I'm keeping clean are these two panels for your and me for viewing let me just get this tripod set up um, but yes everything is very very healthy like I said I went down to the beach yesterday blowing a hoolie down there not very nice audio would have been absolutely rubbish and um, like I said I picked up old Lenny there but apart from him a few shrimps but there was there wasn't much else down there on the beach that I went to I went to rest bay um, and it's not great for finding things at this time of the year obviously as the months progress it's going to get warmer we're going to get more babies in the water now more fry more more species and hopefully we're going to get down south shortly for a nice old rummage down there. But I'm really excited about these gobies breeding. Absolutely over the moon with that. And like I said, some, some people have asked how do you know it's a male and female. Well, the males obviously go black. Well, not obviously. They go black um, in, when in breeding condition. And they get that blue stripe on the back fins there. And the yellow on the dorsal fin. Females tend to stay... Um, sandy, more sandy, motley colour, and the um, and obviously they get a big rounded belly. They get full of the eggs as well. That's a, that was the only giveaway with her. Apart from that, they're pretty well hard to sex out of breeding condition. They look near enough the same. They'll just mimic the background that they're on and stay very very still until some something casually walks past and they think they they can have a go at it. They will. All the snake locks are looking awesome after we fed them in the last video. Now with Lenny on his rock, what will happen in time, just like on the back of the tank where you've got that green algae going to grow, he's kept that pretty well polished in the sea as have all the other winkles and the different types of grazing snails uh, do in the wild. Very very quick, as soon as algae appears they're on it. So um, they've got to clean it up quick and get a feed because like I say there's a limit, limit, limited supply of it. It's always growing, but things graze on it very, very quickly. So 
he's going to be the only one. I've put it on the sand because I find the snails, the other snails, don't like to... Um, sorry, I lose my coffee. There you can see a reflection. Um, they don't like crossing the sand, to be honest, because their, um, their little foot gets all clogged up with sand because of the mucus layer on it. And they don't really like to cross over that. That's where you normally find them all over the rocks where it's easy for them to move around. But the algae is going to start moving, sorry, growing on that rock. And then what he'll do, he'll come out in a little circular motion and he'll graze it off. That's his rock where he feeds. Now you'll normally find that on the beach where you've seen in my other videos where limpets will actually embed themselves into the rock. They've got a very, very hard shell and very, very strong mouthpieces. I mean, they're not going to, he's not going to grind into that shell because that's actually a piece of granite by the looks of it which is super tough, That's, he's not going to get into that. But the sandstone, they will actually wiggle their way into it and create a tiny little indentation where they'll actually sit right into it so nothing, no predators can get underneath the shell or the current can't give them a big thump when a big wave comes in and dislodge them that way. Because once they've been dislodged, it's near enough all over for them because the wrasse will pick them off in seconds and um, as will other things like starfish and other things like that in, in the sea. So. Um, and hermit crabs they'll pick them up but while he's on that shell as you can see he's slightly oval but if I if I bump I'll just make a little bump on the tank on the floor no he's rocking slightly there I don't know if you saw him everything in the limpet world is slow <laughs> as is the cockles and everything else well not all cockles but some of them are quite slow moving and as you can tell, we've been in here now for 11 minutes on my camera filming this. And the only one who's out is Aunt Blenny. She's the only one that's out and about looking for food. So they must be on those eggs looking after them. And what they'll do is they will actually go up and they will actually fin them with their, with their pectoral fins. And they will keep them oxygenated and keep any detritus or anything which is um, which can land on them and obviously create fungus and different things like that which will mess the eggs up if you've ever bred fish before you'll find they'll go white and you'll end up with funguses all over them and they'll be they'll just consume them and they'll be gone so that's what they do they'll constantly be fanning the eggs to keep that fresh water going over the top of them and remove any detritus which is going to attract any naughties onto their eggs so we're just going to have to wait now and find out how long it's going to be before these little guys hatch when they do hatch, I'll have to probably, I'm not sure the size of them, I think they're going to be quite big, the fry, so they may take things like freshly newly hatched brine shrimps, which I've got a load of in here, and I can soon get a culture going within a few days. So I think that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to give it maybe two days, I'm going to do some research as well, but if you guys can find out any research for me on how long goby eggs take to hatch, stick it in the comment section below you might look at something or find something that I haven't found so um, I'd appreciate that like I say I've been doing this for many years but you're always learning every single day every time I go to the beach I learn something new see something new and that's what keeps me and my passion alive for for this kind of uh, for this kind of hobby yes guys I've been doing this for a few years now we're nearly at 50,000 subscribers and um, which is fantastic. I really, really am over the moon with the amount of subscribers that I've got and the amount of people that come back to watch my videos is absolutely awesome. Um, it really is. I say I'm not in this for the money. I'm not in, in this for anything. I'm just into this to teach you as much as I can about doing little tanks like this um, because it will save so much sea life because everyone goes down to the beach and they have a look around. But if they can bring a couple of little bits home, a little bit of stone with a bit of weed on it or something like that, and it'll give them a little insight into what's going on and how a little rock pool works and and what goes on. It's a savage place to live, a rock pool, it really is. I mean, the gobies eat the shrimps. If there's any sign of weakness whatsoever, whether it be a hermit crab, that gobies and the blennies will watch those hermit crabs when they start to move and they think they're going to jump shell, the goby watches them intensely, waiting for that split second when that nice little juicy bum part of it comes out and it hops into the other shell, they'll be there to nail it and eat it. Um,
because there's not a great deal of food in the seat like for things to eat they rely on obviously just catching things and tentacles if you're anemones or or grazing on things but nothing gives itself up easy in the wild everything you've got to fight for it now the shrimps that are in there are um, are very very aware of their surroundings now once they've settled in they're fine their little antenna is sticking out and every time a goby comes near them they'll touch that goby they know exactly where it is they know when they can flick any at any given time and get away from it so but if you just put a new shrimp straight in bang oops that's rock pool life it'll be gone because it'll it'll panic as it goes in the fish sense that panic and they'll be on it straight away just like in the sea if you fishermen if you if you're fishing you stick a lure out and it's erratically moving in the water it's going to attract a little bass or a pollock or something straight away because it doesn't look normal it looks injured and that's what you do you're mimicking something that's injured and it looks it looks not well and they'll nail it straight away and it's the same with everything throughout the marine world and the freshwater world any illnesses any anything in, that's not perfect is going to be is going to be toast basically but keeping one of these rock pool aquariums like i just said can be savage but you've got to put in the things that things eat now the fish are getting used to the flake food and everything else the shrimps like the flake food but now and again things are going to happen your shrimps are going to go missing you're going to see a goby with an antenna sticking out of its mouth um it happens it just happens there you are, I've just seen something new there that I can show you guys as well. Let's go up here and look down the back. Now, you see that shrimp right at the back there? She's just half buried in the lettuce weed. Now, she is chock-a-block with eggs. So, that's another good sign. We've got a healthy system. They've got all that algae to eat there. And now, she is buried up, as it's called full and of little berries and she'll have thousands of them in there and when they actually hatch they will go into a planktonic stage and they will just drift around the tank and they will eat phytoplankton all stuff like that but it's going to be difficult to um to keep them obviously with the pumps and everything else they're going to get sucked into the pumps sadly but we might be able to get a couple out. Who knows, they might dig somewhere into the weed and keep out the way. There she is, she's back up again now. She's a bit higher. There she is, look. Absolutely full up with berries. And you can see that lettuce weed there starting to grow on the back on the tank as well, which is encouraging. Brilliant stuff. There's another one down here somewhere, actually. Let's go down and see. There he is. He's quite quiet. There's some smaller ones as well. Another little guy down there. Picking away. Beautiful little yellow bands on the claws and the legs. Fabulous stuff. Well, Lenny's mooching around. He's just lifted off. You can see that little foot under there. And he'll be grazing away. I don't know which way he's facing to be honest. He could have the antenna out the other side. He may have twisted around since last night. But I'd love to know how old he is. He's absolutely huge. He must be at least probably two inches high. Maybe a little bit more. Look at that gnarly old shell. That looks years old to me. Just think of the amount of starfish. And other limpet killers that have tried to get him over the years. And now, he's got his retirement home in Mark's Tank in his workshop. How about that? You can live out your life in here, mate. Life of luxury now. No more big rats to try and prize you off the rocks. Brilliant. Now there's that lovely painted top shell there. He's up on the wall. You can see there where he's been grazing. Look, there's that little, little patch there where he's been grazing away. And as he grazes that away, that's nourishing him. Who's that? Oh, it's the gang. Yes, and then it will regrow again and create more food. 
Well, I don't know where my naughty little hermit crab is. Well, the big hermit crab. He's gone somewhere in the back, I think. Maybe he's found something tasty to eat back there. Or maybe he's trying to get those eggs from those gobies. Who knows? Maybe he might have sniffed them out and he's creeping around there. Gonna, gonna have himself some caviar for, for his evening meal. Who knows? But he's disappeared somewhere. Where these things go, that's the... It's so interesting for me to keep this tank. Like I said, years and years ago, I tried to do this when there was basic, basic. I'm talking probably 30 years ago. And to do this now, it's just a dream for me. It really is, you know, to see everything, to keep everything now with the knowledge I've gathered over all these years, putting it into practice and still learning. It's absolutely wonderful. It really is. And like I said, I love breeding fish. And if I can breed some of these little gobies out and get some of these going, It'll be fantastic. Now, they're so common in the UK, gobies. There's billions of them. And um, and they're always there's always lots and lots of babies down in there. Obviously, they've got the phytoplankton in the sea to feed off the little babies and the different things that are floating around in the food chain. In the soup, they'll, they'll live off all that. And being voracious little predators, they'll, um, they'll nail anything that comes their way. So it's going to be super interesting. So we might actually wake up one day. I'm not sure if these guys are going to hatch at night. Like I've said before, when I've bred my clownfish um, to show you guys. Some fish like clownfish are the most awesome parents ever for looking after the babies. You'll see them fanning the eggs away constantly, cleaning, making sure everything's clean around the little home. And um, But as soon as those babies hatch, all hell breaks loose if they hatch. If they hatched in the day, the parents would eat every single one of them. That's why clownfish eggs are designed to hatch at night. When it's nice and dark, everyone's asleep, these little eggs hatch, they all go up into the water column and they drift away to join the uh, all the plankton in the water which they feed on. They'll disperse throughout the place and obviously as they get bigger then they'll go down to the bottom and find theirself and host a nice little anemone and start their life off there but with gobies I'm not sure whether they hatch it in the day or whether they hatch at the night will they eat the babies who knows will they look after them who knows um, it's going to be interesting but it'd be absolutely beautiful to see them come out and just with a cloud of uh, babies around them looking after them it'd be absolutely fantastic just like when you breed some uh, some different types of cichlids and things like that they'll, you'll see them with the babies looking after them is a fantastic thing to watch. Right, okay guys, Mrs. Gobi has decided to come out. And she is a lot thinner than when I saw her last. So we've definitely had a spawn somewhere in the background, which is great news. Because they don't lose weight that quickly. So she's deposited some eggs somewhere. And that male could be looking after them. Who knows? But uh, like I say, normally she's out raging away for food. But I can't see what's been going on. You can see a lot of sand has been thrown up here, here, and down in there, and over there. So there's a network of maybe some tunnels all the way through there that that male has created. And uh, that's his territory now. So we can only wait and see what happens. Do you know where the eggs are? Come on, tell me where you've hidden them. I'm going to have to start cutting back some of this lettuce again, I think, soon. It's really starting to take hold again. Lots of big chunks of it coming off of there. Open it up a little bit. Could be right back in there. Look at that. Look at those lovely blue beads on that red beadlet anemone. Absolutely stunning, look at that. Now that one, believe it or not, came from down on the right hand side of the rock there and it's come up and it was having a row with the big blue one here. Yesterday, you know that other one was stinging this one here. He's moved around slightly. Someone thinks they're going to get fed. Hello. But they've been having a little go at each other. All war and territory, you see, in uh, in nature. 
getting the best place for the food. Yep, she's definitely laid some eggs somewhere. Yes, these guys get super, super hungry, man. After they've given up their, uh, after they've given up the eggs, like most fish, they're ravenous for food. I mean, she was obviously ravenous for food before because she was actually creating the eggs within her. But as soon as they release those eggs, then it's uh, let's replenish all those lost nutrients that went into uh, producing those at legs, and they get ravenously hungry. So I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of these shrimps went missing after this. We'll have to pick up a few more next time we go down the beach. Just to create, just to keep that balance and everything which I want in this aquarium. Like I said, sometimes it's a bit of a hard knock life in here for certain creatures. But I want to just make sure everything is getting everything that it needs and that it would get in the wild in this tank. Like I say, supplementary feeding we're doing. But sometimes that hunting instinct takes over and they'll just grab something. And everything's doing a job in here. Everything's that's that's what I tried to say before. You know, everything's the shrimp are doing the clean up crew. They're eating all that algae as well as the hermit crabs are scraping the algae off. You only have to have a shell on the bottom for a while, and that weeds start to grow on it. That algae start to grow, and those little hermit crabs they'll get to work and they'll start pulling it all off the glass, off the walls, just like that little guy's doing down there. You see him in the corner. You see he's dragging it off the glass, off the corners, and you'll get the other ones will come along and they'll start cleaning the shells off of the other ones. Or as soon as they shed a shell, that shell then they'll turn around and they'll eat all the algae off of that shell. So it's uh, it's one big circle it goes in. Anyway guys, this video is getting to about 26 minutes long. I'm not sure if you're enjoying these longer videos. Let me know as well if you want to see any um, anything else on the Evo that I've got my little obviously my little coral reef tank. I can do you an update on that as well, or the pond. I've got that all going, um, or the clownfish. To be honest, they've got three. I think one of my Clarkies, the pair I've got in the uh, in the coral room, has got at least three hundred eggs plus. Whoa! Look at that landed right on your head. Um, so they're going to be hatching shortly. Normally I let them just do a cycle because they just they'll just go through. And they're breeding every two weeks so um but if you want to see that give me a call i can always do a little short video on that just to break things up a bit anyway guys i'm going to leave it on there as always you're all stars thanks for tuning in thanks for being part of mark's aquatics really do appreciate love you all and it does mean the world to me and if you're new to the channel thank you very much for subscribing if you're not subscribed to the channel hit the old subscribe button if you like these videos and that notification bell for up and coming videos okay and click all notifications and you won't miss any more new videos that way. Anyway guys, love you loads. You're all stars. From me and Lenny the Limpet, I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now.